students in the last lecture we have studied the four quantum numbers principal quantum number azimuthal quantum number magnetic quantum number and the spin quantum number now today we will see how the possible values of all these four quantum numbers are determined for an electron present in a given shell for that purpose you must know some formula so i in the previous lecture i have given all the formulas but i will repeat that formulas again and then we will solve some questions or the numericals based on the calculation of quantum numbers now you have to note down these formulas in your notebook let's see the first formula if you know the value of n n indicates the principal quantum number so by knowing the values of n here you can find the total number of subshells let's see the total number of subshells in a given orbit or main shell yesterday i have told you that the orbits or the main shells possess the subshells and here the total number of subshells in a given orbit is given by formula n i will show that here once again here these are the main orbits or the main shells in which the electrons are revolving now yesterday i have told you that these orbits or the shells possess subshells and how many subshells are present in every shell let's see here the shells are numbered as 1 2 3 4 and so on and they are named as k shell if n is equal to 1 it is k shell if n is equal to 2 it is named as n shell if n is equal to 3 it is named as n shell k l m then n then o shell and so on so these are the names of the shells you know and these are the numbers of the shells which are indicated by the principal quantum number n now every shell or every orbit possess the subshells and how many subshells are present that number is equal to n means here this first orbit possesses only one shell the second orbit will possess two subshells that is these two subshells the third orbit will possess three subshells 1 2 and 3 the fourth shell will possess four subshells for our convenience in order to understand you this concept i have shown these subshells in this manner similarly in the fifth shell you will find five subshells so this is the important formula the total number of subshells in a given orbit or main shell is equal to n now again by knowing the value of n you can also find the total number of orbitals present in a shell so let's see the formula total number of orbitals in a given shell now here again yesterday you have studied that these shells not only possess the subshells but they again possess the orbitals that is sub subshells and here the number of orbitals present in a given shell is given by formula n square that is the first orbit will possess only one orbital the second orbit will possess how many orbitals four the third one will possess nine orbitals the fourth shell will possess 16 orbitals and so on 
with the help of again the value of n that is principal quantum number you can also find the total number of electrons present in a given shell or orbit or by energy level and that number is given by formula 2n square so with the help of the value of principal quantum number you can get the number of sub shells number of orbitals and the total number of electrons present in the given orbit now again we have studied the next quantum number that is azimuthal quantum number here azimuthal quantum number is denoted as the symbol small l now if you know the value of n then you can find again the total number of orbitals total number of orbitals present in a given sub shell is determined by knowing the value of l and the formula is 2l plus 1 आता पहा या ठिकाणी या ज्या सब शेल्स आहेत सेकंड शेल मध्ये दोन सब शेल्स आहेत वन फर्स्ट ऑर्बिट मध्ये एकच सब शेल आहे थर्ड ऑर्बिट मध्ये तीन सब शेल आहेत या सब शेल मध्ये किती ऑर्बिटल्स असतात हे डिटरमाइन करण्यासाठी आपल्याला एन च्या व्हॅल्यू वरून देखील या फॉर्म्युल्याच्या सहाय्याने आपण त्या डिटरमाइन करू शकतो आता आपल्याला माहिती आहे की जर एन इज इक्वल टू झिरो असेल तर त्या सबशेलला आपण नाव काय दिलं होतं नेम ऑफ सबशेल काल मी तुम्हाला सांगितलंय एल इज इक्वल टू झिरो असेल तर त्या सबशेलचं नाव आहे एस जर एल इज इक्वल टू वन असेल तर इट इज नेम डॅस पी इफ एल इज इक्वल टू टू देन दॅट सबशेल इज नेम डॅस बी and if l is equal to 3 it will be named as f similarly if l is equal to 4 it is named as g and so on but we require only the first three values in this year l is equal to 0 1 2 and 3 so the names of the sub shells are s p d and f you must remember this chart or table also okay now here let's see if l is equal to 0 the sub shell is s and how many orbitals are present in a sub shell here put the value of l as 0 here you will observe only one orbital will be present in the first shell again if l is equal to 1 here in the second case we have seen that the second orbit possesses two sub shells and the two sub shells are numbered as n is equal to 0 and n is equal to 1 yesterday i have told you how the values of n are given with the help of n if you know the value of n then the values of n are ranging from 0 to n minus 1 so with the help of for this formula i have told you here that if n is equal to 2 that is if main shell is 2 n is equal to 0 and n is equal to 1 so these are the sub shells and they are named as s and p with the help of this chart again remember well that here this is a second shell that is here this is s shell and uh, sorry s sub shell and this one is p sub shell actually in order to understand properly the names of these sub shells they are also indicated with the help of principal quantum number 
these s and t subshells are present in second orbit and therefore they are also named as 2s and 2p so this number 2 indicates the main shell or orbit in which these subshells are present similarly if n is equal to 3 then what are the values of n l is equal to 0 l is equal to 1 and l is equal to 2 with the help of this formula i have written these values and here the subshells are named as 3s 3p and 3d n is equal to 3 so here l is equal to 0 indicates s subshell and therefore it is named as 3s 3p and 3d and so on. Thus, in this manner, here you can write the names of subshells as 3s, 3p, 3d. Here, 4s, 4p, 4d, and 4f, and so on. In this way, with the help of this chart and the formula, you can find the number of subshells which are present in a given shell. and also the number of orbitals present in a given subshell now let's see how the orbitals are determined here i will write the formula values of n is equal to so this is a fifth formula now sixth before going towards the sixth formula let's see the number of orbitals present in a given subshell how they are determined suppose we have given the p subshell now p subshell for p subshell what is the value of n here the value of n is 1 with the help of this chart you can determine the value of n now therefore the number of orbitals in p subshell will be equal to 2l plus 1 that is 2 into 1 plus 1 that is equal to 3 in this manner there are three subshells three orbitals present in three subshell similarly you will find the number of orbitals in d subshell that are 5 by putting the value of l as 2 in this formula similarly f subshell will possess seven orbitals by putting the value of l as 3 okay in this manner you can count or calculate the number of orbitals present in a given subshell now let's see the maximum number of electrons present in a given subshell can also be determined maximum number of electrons present in a given subshell every orbital possess two electrons and therefore the number of electrons present in a given subshell is given by formula 2 into 2l plus 1 here this formula indicates the number of orbitals and each orbital possess two electrons and therefore the total number of electrons present in a given subshell is equal to 2 into 2l plus 1 now let's see the next formula that is the values of mn now by knowing the values of n you can also find the values for magnetic quantum number that is ml magnetic quantum number values which are given with the help of symbol ml and that values are ranging starting from minus m they pass through zero and end with here plus l yesterday i have told you this formula means the ml values can also be written as minus l then minus l minus 
माइनस एन माइनस टू माइनस एन माइनस थ्री सो ऑन देन यू विल गेट जीरो देन हियर यू हैव टू राइट अगेन एन माइनस थ्री कॉम एन माइनस टू एंड एन माइनस वन एंड द लास्ट वन दैट इज एन ओके इन दिस वे बाय यूजिंग दिस फॉर्म्यूला और सिंपली सिंपल फॉर्म्यूला इज दिस वन विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस फॉर्म्यूला यू कैन फाइंड द वैल्यूज ऑफ एम एन एंड द लास्ट फॉर्म्यूला दैट इज द वैल्यूज ऑफ एम एस एम एस इज द स्पीड क्वांटम नंबर एंड यस्टरडे आई हैव टोल्ड यू दैट द इलेक्ट्रॉन एवरी इलेक्ट्रॉन कैन पोजेस आइदर प्लस वन हाफ और माइनस वन हाफ वैल्यू फॉर एम एस मीन्स इट कैन स्पिन आइदर इन क्लॉक वाइज डायरेक्शन और इन एंटी क्लॉक वाइज डायरेक्शन इन ईच ऑर्बिटर रिमेंबर वेन देर आर टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स सो इफ वन इलेक्ट्रॉन इज स्पिनिंग स्पिनिंग इन क्लॉक वाइज डायरेक्शन देन द अदर इलेक्ट्रॉन विल स्पिन विथ एंटी क्लॉक वाइज डायरेक्शन so remember when these formulas now with the help of these formulas let's see how the questions are asked in exam i will apply these formulas again to all the electrons which are present in the main shells i will explain it with the help of one table i am then we will see the questions based on it let's see suppose there is a first shell that is k shell then how many electrons will be present in k shell here 2n square that is only two electrons will be present in k shell i will show the distribution of that electrons in that shell with the help of four quantum numbers by Uh, showing it in a table so let's see first this is a symbol of shell then i will show the value of n that is principal quantum number then i will show here the number of orbitals or number of subshells we know that the number of subshells are equal to n next one that is values of isobutyl quantum number that is values of l and we know that the values of l are starting from 0 and end with n minus 1 in the next column i will show the symbol for subshell next here total number of orbitals टोटल नंबर ऑफ ऑर्बिटल्स हाउ मेनी ऑर्बिटल्स आर प्रेजेंट इन अ गिवन सबशेल वी नो द फॉर्म्यूला टू एल प्लस वन नेक्स्ट वन दैट इज वैल्यूज ऑफ एम एल दैट इज द मैग्नेटिक क्वांटम नंबर एंड दीज वैल्यूज आर indicated by the formula minus n to 0 to plus n next one that is total number of electrons uh, before that i will show here again the values of n s then i will show here the total number of electrons 
in the suction and then in the last column i will show the total number of electrons which are present in a shell that is orbit here the total number of electrons present in a sub shell are given with the help of formula 2 into 2 n plus 1 while the total number of electrons present in a shell is given with the formula n square we will check whether that shell will possess the correct total number of electrons now let's see the first shell which is named as k we know for the first shell since the value of n is equal to 1 the number of sub shells are 1 because it is equal to the value of n now here the values of n will start from 0 and end with n minus 1 and therefore there is only one value and that is n again we know that if n is equal to 0 the symbol for the sub shell is s but this sub shell is present in the first energy level or first orbit so here i will write it as 1 s the total number of orbitals present in this shell are uh, calculated with the help of this formula so here by putting the value of n as sorry l as 0 here you will get only one orbital and the value of n l it is starting from minus n go through 0 and end with plus n so here the value of m l is 0 now let's see these orbitals this m l indicates the number of orbitals there is only one orbital and every orbital is having two electrons remember well and that two electrons are represented with their spins here if one electron is having plus one half spin then the other electron will possess minus one half spin so here i have represented that two electrons and therefore the total number of electrons in a sub shell has become two and the total number of electrons present in the main shell again became two you check once again with the help of this formula Now let's see the next section. So, so next orbit or main shell, which is named as L. Now here for L, n is equal to two. That is second energy level. Now the number of sub shells are two. We have shown here in the figure. The second sub second shell possesses two sub shells. and the values of l will start with 0 and they will end with n minus 1 that is 2 minus 1 so there are only two values of l and with the help of these values you can indicate the names or symbols for that sub shells for l is equal to 0 the sub shell is s and for l is equal to 1 the sub shell is p but these two sub shells are present in the second shell and therefore i will write their names as 2s and 2p now let's see the value of m n here uh, total number of orbitals with the help of this formula here you will obtain again only one orbital for 2s sub shell while there are three orbitals of the p sub shell okay this p sub shell is having three orbitals and that orbitals are represented with the values of n l here when n is equal to 0 m l is equal to 0 while when n is equal to 1 the three values of m l are given with the help of this formula and the values are like this okay minus 1 0 and plus 1 each now these are the orbitals here let's see the s sub shell possesses only one orbital while p sub shell is having three orbitals 
Now we know that every orbital possesses two electrons and the, their spins are represented by plus one half and minus one half. In this way, each orbital will possess the spin values as plus one half, minus one half. Remember well again, in every orbital, if one electron is spinning in clockwise direction, then the second electron will always spin in anti-clockwise direction. So here, always both the values are not same. They are always different for the particular orbital. And therefore here, the number of electrons are 2 in the T shell, sorry, S shell, while the total number of electrons are 6 in a given P sub shell. And in this manner, this second shell or main energy level will possess 8 electrons, 2 plus 6. You can also check it with the help of this formula, N square. Uh, total number of electrons are given with the help of formula 2n square. Check. This is the correct formula. Similarly, you can find the possible values of all the quantum numbers for m shell. Now, m shell indicates n is equal to 3. And therefore, the number of subshells are 3. So, here the values of L are again starting from 0 and N root to L minus 1, that is 3 minus 1, that is 2. And therefore, that subshells are named as 3S, then 3P, and 3D. Because L is equal to 2 indicates the D subshell. Here again, with the help of this formula, you can find the total number of orbitals are 1 for S subshell, 3 for T subshell and it becomes 5 for D subshell. 2 into 2 plus 1 that is 5. Now let's write the values of ML. Here ML will be equal to 0 for S orbital. But the values of L, L will be plus 1 half, sorry, plus 1, 0 and minus 1 for the P subshell. Here L is equal to 2, that is 3D, 5 subshells are present. So here the values are written once again. The values of M L for the D subshell are written as minus L, that is minus 2, minus 1, 0, then plus 1 and plus 2. Now let's see the values of M S. Again they will be plus 1 half and minus 1 half for every electron present in each orbital. So here, how many electrons will be present in each subshell? Let's count. Two electrons will be present in S subshell. Total six electrons are present in P subshell. While ten electrons are present in D subshell. And in this way, the third main energy level will possess total 18 electrons. In this manner, you can also find the electron distribution or the possible values of all the quantum numbers for the n shell by putting the value of n is equal to 4. So, if you know the value of n, then you can find the values of L, ML, M, S and so on. So, at home you try to write the values of all these quantum numbers for N shell. This is also given in your textbook. And check whether 32 electrons are present in the N shell. The total number of electrons present in 4th energy level is given by 
is given as 32 okay now let's see how the questions are asked in exam let's see the first question if n is equal to 2 then what are the values of quantum numbers L and M. Very simple. L is equal to 2. Now here we know that if you know the value of N, then for a given N, the values of L are given as 0 to n minus 1. Okay. And that values will be given as I will show that values later on. Similarly, you have to find the values of m. The values of m l depend upon the values of n. So, we know that for a given n, the values of m l are ranging from minus L past to 0 and end with plus L. So with the help of these two formulae, you can easily find the values of L and M. For that purpose, I will uh, show that values in a chart. In the first column, I will show the value of M. Here, N is equal to 2. In the second column, I will show the values of L. For N is equal to 2, the values of L are starting with 0. Okay. And they are ending with N minus 1. That is 2 minus 1. So, 1. And with the help of these values of L, you can find the values of M, L. Now, here for N is equal to 0, we know that the values of L are only 1 because it is starting with minus n and end with 0 and, uh, and end with plus n. So there is only one value of m l for n is equal to 0. Similarly, here you can find the value of m l for l is equal to 1 and it is minus 1, 0 and plus 1. Right? So this is our answer. If n is equal to 2, the possible values of L are 0 and 1 and the possible values of M, L should be indicated like this. M, L is equal to 0 for L is equal to 0 and minus 1, 0 and plus 1 for L is equal to 1. This question is asked for 2 marks in exam. Similarly, sometimes the question may be asked like this. What are, if n is equal to 3, what are the values of l and ml? Now, I will show that how to write the answer. Now, here I have taken n is equal to 3. Or sometimes they give the name of the shell. We know that the third shell that is named as k l m m shell. Okay. Again, for m shell, um, m shell, that is n is equal to 3, the possible values of m are starting from 0 and end with 3 minus 1, that is 2. So, here I will show the values of m n, these values of m n for n is equal to 0 and n is equal to 1 and the possible values of m n for n is equal to 2, it should be like this. Okay, this is our answer for this question. This question, these two questions are very important because they are always asked in exam. Sometimes, again, the question may be asked like this. Let's see the third question. Here, 
give the number of sub shells give the number of sub shells and orbitals and orbitals for m shell you have to find the number of sub shells for m shell now if here let's see for n shell what is the value of n n is equal to 3 right k l m that is third shell and therefore the number of sub shells you know the formula number of sub shells for a given shell is n square that is 3 square means nine sub shells will be present in the m shell similarly the number of orbitals or number of sorry number of sub shells are given with the help of formula so number of shell sub shells is equal to n that is equal to 3 and number of orbitals are equal to n square that is 3 square that is equal to 9 okay so here this is our answer or you can write this answer with the help of the chart like this n is equal to 3 so n is equal to 0 1 and 2 and therefore here the number of orbitals these are the number of shells total number of shells will be equal to 3 One, two, and three. They are named as S, T, and D. And the number of orbitals. We know that in the S subshell, only one orbital is present. Here are three, and here are five. So the total number of orbitals will be equal to nine. Okay. In this manner also, you can write the total number of orbitals. Similarly, you can also count the total number of electrons. in this m shell in mcq type questions the such questions are asked now again the total number of electrons are given with the help of this formula that is 2 n square here n is equal to 3 and therefore 2 into 3 square that is equal to 80 okay now again i will give you one more question sometimes the notation for the quantum numbers values of quantum numbers are given and they ask us the orbital notation see the question or write orbital notation right orbital notations for electrons in orbitals with following quantum numbers this is a question which is given in your textbook exercise now see the values of different quantum numbers are given here n is equal to 2 and n is equal to 1 is given in the first case and you have to write the orbital notation we know that n is equal to 1 indicates the p sub shell right but that p sub shell is present in second shell and therefore the orbital notation will be 2p similarly see the second case here n is equal to 4 and n is equal to 2 is given n is equal to 2 indicates d sub shell why n is equal to 4 will indicate that d sub shell is present in the fourth shell or fourth orbit let's see the next case that is n is equal to 3 and n is equal to 2 again for n is equal to 2 the sub shell is denoted as d and it is present in the third shell in this way the questions are asked in exam in mcq type of question uh, questions 
the questions are also asked like this let's see the number of electrons present in d shell number of electrons present in d shell ata d shell madhe kiti electrons asnar ahet d hi sub shell hai so number of electrons are given with the help of this formula 2 into 2 h plus 1 ani d sub shell sathi d sub shell sathi एल ची वैल्यू किती असते आपल्याला माहिती आहे सो द टोटल नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स प्रेझेंट इन अ डी सबशेल विल बी इक्वल टू टेन और समटाइम्स द नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स गिवन इन विच आर प्रेझेंट इन एन शेल इज आस आता इथं डी स्मॉल डी आर म्हणजे ही सबशेल आहे मग त्यांना जरी तरी शेल असं म्हटलं असलं तरी नोटेशन्स आपल्याला म्हणतो आहेत की जे स्मॉल लेटर्स आहेत ते कुणासाठी असतात स्पेशली सब शेलसाठी असतात आणि कॅपिटल लेटर्स हे शेलसाठी असतात आता एन शेलमधले नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स काउंट करायचे असतील तर फॉर्म्युला कोणता वापरावं लागेल टू एन स्क्वेअर आता एन शेल फॉर एन शेल वॉट इज द व्हॅल्यू ऑफ एन सी के देन एन मीन्स एन इज इक्वल टू टू and therefore 2 into 2 square that is equal to 8 in this way you have to solve such uh, si- simple mcq type of questions easily so by knowing all the formulae which are given prior in the starting of this video lecture they are very important so that you can write the answers of all questions now in the next lecture i will tell you about the shapes of orbitals here we have seen that the orbitals are having a three dimensional shapes so we will see that shapes in the next lecture thank you